If you're planning on getting a stair lift assessment, whether it's through USA Medical Supply or any other company, you need to know the facts, you need to have the checklist. I have Andre here, service manager of USA Medical Supply, and we're going to go over that checklist today. How are you doing today, Andre? Hey, good, good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> so, first and foremost, if somebody is getting a stair lift assessment, does the lowest price per model, let's say for instance, a, a dealer came in at this model and came in four or $500 less than another dealer, does that close the deal? Or is that, you know, the, what, what <laughs> the customer should be looking for? Is there more to that? Yeah, there's definitely more to that. Obviously, that's uh, the main thing that people usually are concerned with, what's the upfront price. But um, I can tell you now, this is not the entire story. And that's, that's where the rest of it comes in. It's, uh, there's a, definitely a big question about the service, about uh, parts, about the reliability, about the maintenance and all that. Just like any other piece of technology and equipment, at some point, these things start to, you know, they start to fail, they start to need some service, things like that. So this is where we see a big, big difference in what happens after that warranty runs out you know what happens you know after like the initial thing you get installed but then you have some issues that happen at like the weekend you know and you're you're stuck like you know downstairs on a friday night you know um those those are the definitely things that make a big big difference so one of the comparisons we found out was that we had a customer where we were about four hundred dollars higher than and i told him to uh, ask the other company how much they're going to charge for the service call, if they're going to charge by the hour. Right. And uh, oftentimes when people need servicing, they could spend up to $800, I'm hearing, on a service call, yeah. where if they went you know, maybe through a local dealer like us, where they had a flat rate service call, they could have saved five yeah. or $600 in that first service call. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the surprising thing. I hear some prices out there that, you know, they come in uh, maybe from a much further place. So their initial travel, you know, service call is going to be higher. But then they start to charge you like a labor rate after like 30 minutes of them, you know, working on the on the chair, which, yeah, you're right. It can end up being like a four, five, six hundred dollar service call like at the end. Of, that's that's definitely significant, you know. So, yeah, when you have a flat rate, it's it's definitely a lot of peace of mind. You know, we're there five minutes, you know, two hours, things like that. You, you at least know, OK, I know up front what is this is going to cost me. Of course. You know? uh, another thing I want you to go over is no matter what the brand is, uh, I, I believe customers should ask the pricing on parts too. If they really wanna do their due, due diligence, they're gonna find out dealers such as us and our competitors, we charge different levels of pricing for parts because there is a markup on parts. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you let us know exactly what parts there are to a stair lift that most people will probably replace in the first 10 years, five to 10 years of use, what we're really looking at here? Yeah, so, you know, definitely the parts that uh, every stair lift is gonna need replaced are those batteries, you know, those batteries are gonna need to be replaced. You know, manufacturers usually give like a one year warranty. We see them last longer, depending on how they, they get used. But that's usually the, the, the least amount of money that you spend, you know, to, uh, to replace those batteries. When what? It, what are we looking at for cost for batteries typically across the board, you think? So the batteries here, you know, they're $60 a piece. There are two of them in there. And, you know, we have some of them that last even six years, you know, out in the field. But we have customers that ride this thing 20 times per day and they have to get them replaced once per year, you know. So it, it okay. varies about you know, how long the staircase is, how heavy the people are, you know, and how many times they obviously ride that stair lift per day. And not all batteries are created the same too, because recently we formed a relationship with MK Battery, yeah. which is one of the best battery companies in the entire world. So I think it's important for the customers to ask, hey, when you're replacing the batteries, yeah. what brand are you gonna use? You're gonna use a, an off Chinese brand or yeah. are you gonna use a solid brand in the industry? Absolutely, that's very important because we mm. go in sometimes and it's a, a failure of the battery. When we take them out, they're, they're enlarged or they're, you know, uh, they're, they're uh, melted together. Wow. You know, so that tells me, like, you know, uh, that a fire could have started, things like that, you know, so you definitely, that's, 
that's very critical you know what kind of batteries you put in there just because you know they get heated up things like that and uh, you, you don't want to start a fire with, with batteries and definitely mk batteries i think is one of the best ones what's next after batteries what else are we looking at for possibly replacing in this thing yeah so you know after in this one is you know definitely um as maintenance free when you know the the track here is as a 10-year warranty it doesn't wear out things like that when when you know tracks wear out when, when they're metal on metal you need to lubricate them Let's if you show don't do people that what metal on metal yeah like. exactly that if that doesn't get you know lubricated or serviced you know it's going to start to wear out it's going to uh, leave some metal shavings mm -hmm. it's going to start to have a little more loose you know play in between the sprockets there you're going to start to hear clanking things like that you know that's another one the you know the then after that there's not um, a lot to a stair lift you know they try to keep it simple there's a motor in there there's the brains a circuit board and then there is wiring right you, it's in some cases you have these these cables that are in like in the you know in the armrest that have to flex you know depending on what's surrounding there if they're in a very dry kind of place and then you know, maybe the sun hits them you know this plastic uh, insulation can get kind of rigid you know mm -hmm. and after a while you can get a cable that you know is, is broken you know breaks inside something like that you know how much are parts like that like cables yeah those are not those are not too bad you know the, it's it's more about the labor <laughs> to replace one of these than it's actually the the parts cost because you know, gotcha. some of these are you know are inside these this tubing mm -hmm. and all that so just it's more of a pain to, to just replace them than the parts are. The significant cost to the parts are definitely the motor inside mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. What motor. are motors usually warranted for by the manufacturer? So this uh, specific one for the uh, SL300 comes with a two-year uh, warranty. The SL600, um, I believe, has a five-year warranty on the motor in there. Something like that. Two years, uh, you know, five years, they range a little bit, you know. Um, this one actually has a, a lifetime warranty, you know, on the on all the parts. So, um, what are we looking at for cost if we have to replace a motor? The motor. Let's. This is a better example here. Um, so, the motor is is literally uh, it would be about twelve hundred dollars. Wow, so that that's could be very a, significant. Almost yeah. a third of the cost of the stair lift. That's wow. just the part. Yeah, that's just wow. the part. It, it's going to take about, you know, an hour or two hours. It can, you know, and, and this setup, you have to completely take the carriage out and, and just, just rip it apart, you know, and then put everything back, you know, after you replace the motor. So it's definitely so, a significant so, repair. So when we're looking at these labor um, charges and doing significant, you know, volume of labor, it, it would make sense for a customer to shop around, maybe for a flat rate service yeah. call or a company that does a flat rate service call. And we do that because we yeah. know people are on Social Security, they're on Medicare, they're on fixed budgets every month. Right. And yeah, that's old school mentality, you know, for any service industry is to do a flat rate service call, which we do. And I think it would be very important for people to shop with that. Even if they pay some more money with this at the initial start, yeah. And they're planning on keeping this for five, ten years. They're yeah. going to save a significant amount of money. Definitely, you know, yeah. By looking at going right. down that route. Yeah. Uh, what about things like the circuit board or the charger? How long do those last? And what are we looking at for pricing? Right. Yeah. Circuit board is is also one of the big ones. You know, it could be around six hundred dollars to replace the circuit board. Circuit board usually are not that prone to just kind of going bad. Usually there's an underlying issue that can cause that. Maybe something with, you know, the charging, maybe um, the environment, maybe it's very humid, you know, things like that. Maybe it's very hot, wherever the thing is. Maybe we don't see, you know, uh, we had a case where one of these was landing right on top of like a vent and the, the heat, you know, was kind of blowing into it every time. Yeah. And over time that heat was just going inside and then that overheats the electrical components, which is the biggest enemy for electrical components you know uh, they don't typically go bad that you know that often but it, it is it is something that you know can happen you know we see it once in a while yeah um, and then after that I think you asked about the charger charger is one of the the ones that can 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 go bad you know more often it, it really depends again if you have some uh, power surges things like that we we noticed an increase in service calls for chargers after like a big storm 
Oh, I wow. think, you know, when the power comes back or something, you know, these, these, these go in a regular outlet, you know. Mm. And uh, I did, you know, I think three months ago, have, uh, we had a storm here, and I think I replaced like three charges right after that. Oh, you wow. know, but they're not that costly. I think it charges about $150, you know, for something like this. So. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, getting back to uh, replacing chargers and, and through lightning storms, is it recommended that people use a, a surge protector? Uh, if they, yeah, least? definitely. Yeah, we, you know, that would definitely help protect those. You know, we usually don't um, see them a lot, but it would definitely would have uh, protected them in those instances. Yeah. Uh, and another thing I want to ask you too mm -hmm. is that. Oftentimes we've seen this through the years. There's often a, uh, a kill switch on the carriage for these where people can turn them off. If they're going to go on vacation or they don't plan on using a stair lift for a week, should they hit that kill switch to preserve the battery? Um, I recommend not to just because, you know, um, this is automatically taking as much juice, we'll call it juice, as it needs to, and then it turns off uh, when it's fully recharged and all that. Uh, we did see, you know, people kind of tr trying to turn everything off and then just because, let's say the battery's already four or five years old, mm -hmm. when they came back from like a week or two weeks and they turned it back on, the batteries haven't been charging for this long and then, the, the, you know, the chair wasn't moving, right? There's no, um, you know, concern with safety if you leave it on. Just because if you're home and it stays on, <laughs> plugged in all the time, and, and nothing bad happens it's yep. it's fine to leave it like that i know people want to just kind of turn everything off but we do have this happen once in a while when people say oh i came from vacation my stair lift is dead yes and i'm like oh what well I, I turned it off you know something like that i don't think it's necessary to uh, right, to do dude. that you know uh as far as you know maybe reading reviews online uh for possible uh stair lift companies is there any other questions a customer, you know, should ask uh, the the possible vendor that's going to do their stair lift uh, when they're doing that assessment? Yeah, I think definitely ask them what happens when when it breaks. You know, uh, everybody's going to say, "Oh, ours never breaks," or things like that. All of them break. Oh. You know, what happens? Am I am I going to have to wait for you guys for five days? You know, to drive yeah. from I don't know eighty miles away or absolutely. Or, uh, I think you, you mentioned it to somebody the other day, you know, it happened to them. Uh, I think even even this, this weekend it was, right? Friday uh, night, the, the stair lift just went down and they just had a hip replacement. Yes. And, you know, they were they were stranded. It was Friday, we were almost done and uh -huh. everything. And uh, you asked me, hey, you know, is there any way you can come in tomorrow? To, and absolutely, you know, we're close. I came in Saturday, even though the service department is, is closed on Saturdays, but we went to the person's house, you know, figured out what the issue was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes a, a big difference, you know, because mm. this person with the hip replacement, you know, they weren't going to kind of try to, you know, go up the stairs and they would have to just sleep downstairs for the entire weekend. I think these, these things make the, the big difference. What happens when when, when, when these sterilists break, you know, are we going to be left to, uh, of you know, by themselves? Or? And I guess a red flag before that, too, would be if somebody's doing a sterilist assessment and they're asking for a video assessment, right? Because they don't want to take the time to mm. go to the house. They want to make yeah. sure you're a potential client. So that kind of tells me yeah. right from the get-go, <laughs> hey, if they're not going to go to your house to begin with, how... If yeah. that, how how difficult is it going to be for them to come when you need servicing right away when this stair lift is down on a Friday like yeah. you perfectly mentioned in uh, the case last week of uh, you know a person getting the hip replacement yeah. but you know that should be a telltale sign yeah it? that was interesting we we you know uh, I think accidentally saw some some of our competitors they were like yeah take take a picture downstairs, take a picture upstairs, yes. measure the width, measure the length, and <laughs> give us all of the information. We're just going to give you a price, you know. Uh, we, we, we don't do that. We try to, you know, go out there ourselves. We, we go over all these questions, all these potential kind of situations that can appear because we value this, you know, face-to-face, -face, um, you know, contact with our customers. And that's what happens you know, after that. Uh, when they need us, we're, we're there again. We don't say, okay. Um, let's do a video. We'll FaceTime. You go in there with the screwdrivers, and I'll tell you what to do. You know, yeah. we we, we uh -huh. actually prefer them not to try to fix uh, the, the the chairs and all that. You know, so we we prefer to to go and take care of it. You know.
So that sauce. sounds great. Hey, thank you, Andre, uh, yeah. for the checklist today. We really appreciate it. And uh, people in Massachusetts, Connecticut, they can call us at 413-733-7843. Andre's extension 100, or you can text Andre 24 <laughs> hours a day, but yeah, yeah. he only checks him during business hours. Yeah, 413-200-4191. Absolutely, All right. yeah. Thank you. No problem.